One of the important questions when developing Compose applications and especially creating text UI is how we can create text input, how we can get text input from user. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to do that. First, uh, because we are not going to use our preview anymore in this video, I'm going to close it by switching to code view and now uh, I also can remove the preview part, but it's just fine. Let's leave it as is. I'm going to create another composable. I type comp and create a composable. This is a placeholder for that composable and I'm going to name it my text input. All right. And inside this my text input composable, I'm going to show you several ways of input uh, inputting text or entering text. Note that Jetpack Compose has several composables from different packages for that. One of them uh, or one type of them is from the foundation package as, and some of them are from the material package. So because I'm going to show you all of them, let's create a column. I create a column and then inside it, first I'm going to start with basic text field. I import basic text field and uh, note that here it's very important to know that there are two very important parameters that we need to pass in to basic text field. One of them is the value for the text field to display and the other is uh, the lambda that handles the change in that text field. So whenever the user enter a character enters an input in that text field, it needs to be updated. It needs to be uh, it changing the value of uh, the text field. So the user enters, for example, hello, and as any more characters of hello are being entered, the value of their first parameter text field value needs to be updated to that newly entered uh, value from the user. So let's see that in action. Value. This is the name of the parameter and for that I can enter uh, an empty, even an empty string and then the other one is on value change and it can be just an empty lambda. But note that this will not do any change. This will not do anything. The user cannot enter anything. Even if you enter a name here like compose, this will be the only thing that will be displayed in our basic text field and nothing else will be entered. So to solve this challenge, we need to introduce state. We need to introduce a state that we will use for it. So I'm going to say var basic text. This will be the value of my basic text field and I'm going to create it with delegates so I use the by keyword and then remember mutable state of we define it with mutable state of and then remember it's very important to remember it if you don't remember it, the value of the text field will not be updated to the uh, input that the user enters. We also need to import get field, uh, get value and set value from the composer runtime package. So I press Alt and Enter to see if Android Studio will help me import it automatically. Seems like it doesn't, so I enter it manually. I go to my imports and import 
androidx.compose runtime.get value and import androidx.compose.runtime set value. So now I will be able to uh, use this uh, mutable state of uh, with an initial value. I'm gonna pass in an initial value of empty string and no more errors or warnings. So the initial value of the value parameter for basic text field now will be basic text. And on value change, what on value change does is that it receives the input that the user enters. And then we can assign that new value to the value of our text field that will be displayed for the user. So we know that we are receiving a parameter, a string parameter called it in our lambda. So I'm gonna uh, put value equal to it. Actually, you need to uh, use the name of your state here. So the name of your state is basic text. So I'm gonna use basic text. And whenever basic text changes, this basic text field is recomposed again and it is updated to the latest value and displayed to the user. Note that we cannot uh, test this on our preview section. That's why I closed it earlier in this video. We are gonna run it on our emulator. So I'm gonna call my text input inside set content my text input. Let's run the application and see the result. I run the emulator by pressing shift and F10. All right, the application is launched, but we don't see anything here. The reason is that it doesn't have a background different from the default background, therefore we don't see anything. However, we can enter some text here. So, some text. You can see that we can enter some text here. So that's it, basically how basic text field works. But you can add some padding and you can also use modifiers to give it some centering and things like that. But this is not the only way to use text fields and uh, to receive text input from the user. Before doing anything more, let's add some padding modifier let's see which yeah modifier is the third one so if we uh, use the positional sense of the word we can skip using the parameter name and just use modifier itself so I'm gonna use padding a padding of 8 depth should be fine Okay, before running our application again, I'm gonna use some other
types of text field as well. So I told you there are several types of text fields that you can use in Jetpack Compose. One of them was the one that I showed you, basic text field. The other is text field. Text field, I press enter. And if you open text field, Sorry, if you open text field, you can see its uh, documentation and how it is defined. You can see that it is from the material package. There we go, compose material. And you can find a lot of information about it. But we're gonna use it very simply. We're gonna pass it some value. So I'm gonna define a value for it. We are not going to use the same value for or for all text fields. Every text field has its special value that the user enters. So we need a special state for it. Okay, var, I'm gonna define it as a text field, tf, tf text, text field text, Again, define it using uh, delegates. Remember, mutable state of. There we go. And for the value, I pass in tf text. And for unvalue change, I'm gonna pass in the new value that the user enters to the value of tf text. I'm gonna assign it, I'm gonna assign it to TF text. So TF text equals it, the value that the user enters. Okay. Why is that? The it is not accepted on value change. So on value change, tf text, why do you remember, mutable state of, and it's got a value, and then we are using that. Okay, tf text and it. There we go. It's now accepting it and it's working. So, in order to see what these text fields are for, before them, I'm going to use a simple text that tells us what they do. So the first one is actually basic text field. I'm going to copy it and use for the second one as well. The second one is text field. And the third one, the third one and the more interesting one that is my favorite is outlined text field. The outlined text field is actually a text field that is more beautiful by default and it has a nice outline for your text when you create it and it can have a text holder, it can have a label for your text like what you see in HTML forms nowadays. So outline text field, again, it has a value parameter for its value. I'm gonna define outline text field text. I define it using, remember, mutable state of the default value of empty string, otf text is the default value and on value change should handle the changes to it please receive the new value and assign it to otf text outline text field text so otf text equals it and one of the interesting things okay What's the problem here? OTF text. OK, 
And that, okay, this has to be there. Yeah, sorry. I define it well. So, another parameter that is my favorite when defining outline text field is label. By defining a label, actually, you can uh, give it a value. You can give it a text, a default text or placeholder for it to display for us when there's nothing entered uh, in the field. So I define the label. It's as a lambda. You can see from the definition here, label. It receives a lambda that is actually the content that we want to display as the label. So I'm going to use a text here as label and let's call it outlined. This is just the label to display. All right. And because it already has a label, we don't need to precede it with a text that says what kind of text field it is. For the previous two ones, we added two text fields. We added two text composables, one of them basic text field, the other text field to show to the user what kind of uh, text field they are. But for the third one, it already has a label parameter and it will tell us what kind of uh, text field it is. So let's run our application again and see what we have. Installing. There we go. You can see that each one of these text fields have a different appearance. The basic text field is simply a basic text field. It doesn't have any decoration or something. It's just an empty field. We can enter some text. And for the text field, we see some background color and it also has some nice baseline color. We can enter some text, text. And for the outlined one, you can see that it's very beautiful. It shows a default label inside the text field. And as long as we uh, put our mouse inside it or put our finger inside the text field, the outlined label moves to the corner and we can still see the label of the text field. It's very beautiful. So outline, enter some text just to see how it works. So there we go. So I talked about three types of text fields in Jetpack Compose that you can use for your Compose applications to get text input from the user. One more thing before I forget is that you can also specify the type of input that the user can enter for you. For example, for the outline text field, I can specify the type of the input that I want to enter by looking at the list of parameters that I can enter visual transformation, read only, text style, placeholder, leading icon, trailing icon is error, visual transformation, keyboard options, and keyboard actions. Yeah, keyboard options. You can specify the type in keyboard options. It's the parameter name, keyboard options, that default. I'm gonna customize it, copy, and then as you can see, one of the parameters that it accepts is keyboard type. So keyboard type, I'm gonna change it for example to 
keyword type dot number. Let's allow our user to only enter number here. Let's run our application. Let's see what I did. Keyboard options. I used the keyboard options parameter. It's also available for other text fields as well. I actually customized the default one by using the copy function on the default object and then changing the default value of keyboard type parameter to keyboard type dot number. This will change the type of the input that is allowed to number only. So now if I want to enter something, I will see a number keyboard and I can only enter numbers. There we go. So that's a basic uh, lecture of how text fields work and how you can manage text inputs. Now you can do whatever you like with the input data that the user enters because we are using a state variable to uh, keep track of the uh, user input and then we can pass it to some API, we can use it to uh, make some changes in our view model, save it in the database or do whatever we want with it. I hope that you liked this video.